This problem looks pretty wordy, in fact, maybe a little bit complex, but usually if we draw a picture and uh, we label things carefully and try to find the thing we're trying to optimize, um, we'll get through it. So when you see a hard problem, just kind of uh, be patient with it. This, this one, we have a window in the form of a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle. So we've got, so I think that's called a Norman window. So we've got this rectangle. And then on top of the rectangle is a semicircle. Now, um, the rectangle is of clear glass, so it's clear down here. And the semicircle is tinted. Okay, and oh, the tinted glass only transmits half as much light per unit area. Okay, now the total perimeter is fixed, so all the way around cannot change. What we want to do is choose the proportion so that we'll get the most light in. Okay, so for a given perimeter, so perimeter fixed. So um, we're going to need some dimensions. We're going to need to know how tall is the rectangle. Also, if the semicircle fits above the rectangle, the radius of that semicircle is related to the width of the rectangle because 2 times the radius would have to equal the width so that the semicircle would fit over that. Okay, now if we want to figure out how much light is transmitted, let's maybe call that L, the amount of light we get, it's going to be proportional to the area here. So there's going to be some, some fraction that we multiply by the area. The area of the rectangular part is 2 times, x, two times R times X, so 2RX, that's the area there. Now the area of a circle is pi R squared. Since we only have half of the circle, we're going to divide that in half. But the constant we should multiply for this tinted glass is only half the constant that we should multiply for clear glass. So Now, really, this k is in both of the terms. So I could factor it out. Pi, let's see, pi r squared over 2. So that's going to be 1 fourth pi r squared. Sorry, that's a little messy. Now, here's the thing. We have this light function. So here we're changing our, our dimensions. If there's a peak right, in our light function, if we multiply the function by k, which is some fraction, it's, all it could do is just smash the picture. But if we push it in, everything gets smashed by the same amount. The peak is still going to be in the same place because it's the same constant multiplying everything. So it turns out the constant doesn't really matter because it's in both of these terms it factored out. It's not going to affect where the peak is, just how much light we get. So we're just looking for the maximum amount of light for a given k. So we can actually ignore k at this point. And the function that we get for the transmitted light is 2 times r times x plus 1 quarter pi r squared. OK. The problem now is that the amount of light we get depends on two things, x and r. So we need to find a relationship that will allow us to eliminate one of the variables from this equation. And the relationship we can use, the thing we haven't looked at yet, is the fact that the perimeter is fixed. Let's get an, an equation for the perimeter. So the perimeter, to go around this thing, you'd have to go a distance x and a distance 2r and another distance x. So, so far, that's 2x plus 2r. And uh, then you'd have to go around this circle. Now, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So if you only go around a semicircle, you only do half of that. Half of 2 pi r would just be pi r. So what we know is that there's some constant, the perimeter. And that determines the relationship between x and um, r. So we know that 2x is uh, 2 plus pi, or 2x plus 2 plus pi times r is equal to the perimeter. We can use that. We could solve for 2x and plug it in here. And that would eliminate one of my variables. Notice 2x is going to be this constant, which is the perimeter. We're calling it p, minus 2 plus pi times r. And we're going to replace the, the whole 2x here. So we get that the light transmitted is r times 2x, and that's p minus 2 plus pi r um, plus this part, the 1 quarter pi r squared.
Now since p is a constant, we have the light transmitted in terms of just one variable r. Let me rewrite this. If I distribute the r, I have um, p times r minus 2 plus pi, r times r is r squared, plus 1 quarter uh, pi times r squared. I got two r squared terms, so let me do one more thing. I'll just combine them. We have p times r minus um, 2 plus pi, or let's see, minus 2 plus pi. If I want to put this uh, 1 quarter pi in here, I need to do it negative 1 quarter pi times r squared. Let's see, if I distribute that, I have a minus 2 r squared and a minus pi r squared and a plus um, 1 quarter pi r squared. That's the equation that we're going to need so that we can uh, optimize here for our for our um, for our light transmittance here. Okay, we know also we might as well note that there are bounds on R. Um, if we make R zero, we're not going to have um, we're going to have a really tall, skinny window. It's not going to have any area, so we won't have any light transmitted there. Also. Um, R really can't go any bigger than, um, well, certainly no bigger than the perimeter. That's an that's an upper bound. It's uh, not a not a strict upper bound, but at least um, that would give us a sense of how big it can go. Okay, let's. Uh, I'll copy that on another slide so that we don't get. To so we have um, the light that's transmitted is equal to p times r minus 2 plus, I had a pi minus a quarter pi, so I just wrote that as 3 quarter pi r squared. We've got some bounds on r so that it's a continuous closed function, continuous, bound, continuous function on a closed bounded interval. Um, and then we have this relationship between x and r. Once we've found r, I'm going to need that. So what we're going to do is uh, look for critical points. So we're going to take the derivative of l as a function of r which gives us p minus, let's see, this 2 comes down, we get 2 plus 3 quarter pi times r. And the derivative is always defined, it's a nice parabola, so we're just going to solve this problem. We're going to get p equals 2 times 2 plus 3 quarter pi r, and it's going to give us our critical point is at p over, um, if I distribute that, it's 4 plus 3 halves pi. Okay, so there's our um, our radius. Now, actually, since this is a parabola that opens down, um, the cr the only critical point on a parabola that opens down would be at the vertex. So we know that this critical point is the max. So this is going to be the radius that we need to choose. Let's see what that says about um, the the dimension x, which was the height of the rectangular part of the window. Let's see, according to this relationship, 2x should be the perimeter minus um, 2 plus pi times the radius, and we found that the radius should be the perimeter over 4 plus 3 halves pi. All right, and I just want to simplify that a little bit. I'm going to um, maybe, let's, let's just get a common denominator and put those put those together so that we have uh, 2x is going to be, if I need a common denominator of 4 plus 3 halves pi, so I'm going to take p times 4 plus 3 halves, 3 halves pi, okay, and uh, then, I'll, then everything will have this denominator of 4 plus 3 halves pi, and then we have um, a minus 2p and a minus pi p, and we'll put all that together we have here basically 4p minus 2p, so that's just going to leave us 2 times the perimeter. And then we have 3 quarter pi p minus a full pi p would be minus, um, oh no, it's 3 halves pi p. 3, 3 halves pi p minus a pi p would leave a positive, positive uh, 1 half pi um, p there. So we have, let's see, all divided by 4 plus 3 halves pi. Um, I really hate having these complex fractions, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom um, by 
Uh, let's multiply top and bottom by 2. So we have 2x is um, 4 plus pi times p. So as I took this times 2, I had a 4p and I had a pi p, so factor out the p. And if I multiply this by, by uh, 2, I get 4, 8 plus 3 pi. Okay. And so finally, x is equal to, if I, um, if I uh, divide by 2 here, 4 plus pi times the perimeter all over, multiplying these by 2 would give me 16 plus 6 pi. Okay, so now we've found our dimensions. Uh, for r here, I could multiply top and bottom um, by 2, and I would have 2 times the perimeter over 8 plus 3 pi. Okay, um, important to notice here that x and r just scale by p. So they still they still have the same x is the same fraction of the perimeter, and r is always the same fraction of the perimeter, even if you change the perimeter. So we kind of expect that, right? That um, it doesn't really matter what the perimeter is; that just sets the basic size of the window. Um, so we'd kind of expect that in the answer that we'd have this that uh, r would always be the same fraction of the perimeter, x would always be the same fraction of the perimeter. That means that um, the the um, the shape of the window stays the same even if the length of the window changes.